All right, everybody, good morning. Uh, you guys may be familiar with me. My name is Ben Zelikovitz. I'm one of the founders of Get Quorum. It's our absolute pleasure to have you joining us on our webinar today. Uh, I'm joined by my two partners, JJ Hugh, who's our, one of our co-founders and a resident technical wizard, uh, and our third partner, Trevor Zyle, uh, who handles all of our legal and contractual matters, in addition to being a law partner uh, at a global law firm. So much like yourselves, JJ, Trevor, and I, we've been in isolation uh, for a few weeks at this point. Uh, we also each have kids, some uh, as young as two months and the oldest about four years. So speaking on behalf of the Get Quorum team, we cannot wait for the uh, daycares to reopen. As well, uh, JJ's building decided to test their fire alarm systems today of all days. So if you hear fire alarms, screaming children or mothers, JJ's cat, please excuse us given the circumstances. Uh, so some quick housekeeping items before we get started. This presentation should be only about 22 or 23 minutes, uh, plus time for question and answers towards the end of the session. You can use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen to submit any questions. Uh, we are recording the webinar and it will be available in a few days on our blog and we'll most likely link to it um, in our next newsletter. You'll also be relieved to know that I'll be turning off my video feed, uh, so you won't be forced to look at me this entire time, uh, but mostly turning it off to, as to not distract from the uh, content that we are presenting. So I'm gonna go ahead and disable my video and we're gonna get her going. So it's remarkable times that we are living through. The corona, coronavirus pandemic has definitely uh, left an indelible mark on the world as we know it. We're unsure when the current social distancing measures will be lifted, and until then, traditional AGMs will likely not be taking place. We know this because we've had many AGMs canceled over the past three weeks. We are equally unsure of what the world will be like even after social distancing measures have been relaxed. What we know is that Get Quorum has been inundated with requests for help and so we've designed a service that can be used to hold annual general and owner meetings virtually. Our audience today consists of several hundred people, uh, many of whom are from Ontario, Florida, British Columbia, and other states and provinces around North America. There's a large contingent of property managers uh, from the condo and HOA industry, uh, as well as associations, not-for-profits, and other membership organizations that are joining us today. Just before we get started, for those that may not be totally familiar with Get Quorum, we're gonna very quickly review the services that we provide. Of course, we're here today to discuss our new hosted virtual AGM and real-time voting service. We also provide uh, consent, opt-in, and voting certificate gathering, meeting notice distribution, electronic proxy and advanced balloting, high capacity printing and mailing, uh, and governance notice distributions like mailers, budgets, circulars, et cetera. So enough about that, let's get right into our content. Over the course of this webinar, we endeavor to help you understand a few things. What a virtual meeting is, the benefits of meeting virtually, best practices to implement, how a virtual meeting is best administered, how real-time voting fits into a virtual meeting, and finally, some recommended procedures and considerations. So what exactly is a virtual meeting. It may seem obvious, but a virtual meeting is one that takes place using electronic or even telephonic means. The critical point being with a virtual meeting is that owners and members can participate in the AGM as if they were there in person. There are two main types of virtual meetings to consider. There's a virtual only meeting, which is the only option available for most while social distancing measures are being enforced, and virtual meetings are held exclusively online with no in-person meeting. Hybrid meetings by comparison are held in conjunction with an in-person meeting and have added a live stream and allow for virtual attendance and participation in addition to the in-person meeting. Some of the benefits that you can expect to enjoy when hosting a virtual AGM are better accessibility. Owners will be able to access the meeting from anywhere in the world. All that is required is an internet enabled device 
and a solid internet connection. Increased participation, along with more accessibility comes more participation, which gives our clients a better chance of reaching their goals, whether that is simply achieving quorum, election of directors, or passing of an important bylaw. Reduced costs and effort, with no venue rentals, no catering, no travel time, it's just less effort. Administering a virtual AGM means everyone can participate from the comfort of their home offices. Adherence to social distancing measures. Now, let's face it, if it weren't for COVID-19, we would not be having this conversation today. Virtual meetings are the only way to host valid owner meetings while adhering to mandatory and recommended social distancing measures. Some virtual best practices if you're going to proceed with a virtual meeting. Communicate with your owners early. Let them know that the decision to go virtual has been made and explain why. Conduct a dress rehearsal. This is particularly critical, particularly for your first virtual AGM. Reviewing your meeting agenda and ensuring that your virtual meeting solution is able to support the various procedures you'll be completing is imperative. Dress rehearsals also give hosts, speakers, and panelists the opportunity to familiarize themselves with the technology you're using to deliver the virtual meeting. It isn't hard to learn, but it is re recommended that the first time using the software isn't in front of your entire ownership or membership group at your meeting. Q&A management. Carefully plan how much time you allot to Q&A and encourage owners to submit questions in advance of the meeting. Review and determine which questions will be discussed live and which will be responded to independently. From there, you're gonna to wanna to have a dedicated resource in place during the meeting to moderate questions that are being submitted live. Voting governance. One of the, good, one of the best things potentially about virtual meetings is that you're not gonna to have to deal with paper proxies and ballots. For virtual AGMs, you do need to have a plan to ensure that advanced voting, whether it's via electronic proxy or electronic ballot, are properly accounted for. You'll need to develop a system to ensure that proxy holders are given the appropriate amount of ballots for each matter of business. Lastly, on the best practices, tech support and moderation. Using webinar software is not rocket scientist, but it isn't a walk in the park either. There are an array of options that can impact the virtual experience of meeting participants. It is wise to have a dedicated resource manage the webinar during the meeting. As well, live moderation of the question queue will help the chairperson and speakers determine which questions should be answered in real time and which require a private response after the meeting. So I'm gonna hand it off to my partner, JJ, who's gonna walk us through some of the technology uh, capabilities and procedures. JJ. Thanks, Ben. So uh, in this section, we'll talk about the common capabilities of uh, webcasting technologies and how they would translate into procedures for actually running the virtual AGM. Uh, if you are typically the person that chairs the meeting, then this will be of particular interest to you. Uh, there are numerous webcasting software out on the market that can be used to host an AGM virtually. Um, webinar technology would be the one we'd recommend. Uh, if you think about it, the tools needed to run a successful webinar are also the same needed to run a successful virtual AGM. The difference between a webinar and an AGM is really in the meeting procedures. So if you're going to be looking for your own webinar software or webcasting software, you want to be sure that it has at least the features we'll discuss in the next few slides. So let's just start off, uh, each virtual AGM has three types of participants, each with specific permissions that define what they can and can't do within the virtual AGM. Hosts are the ones that run the show. They have full control over the meeting. Hosts can share their screen. They can mute and unmute specific people. They have advanced controls to moderate the meeting. And this is the level of control you would want to assign to the meeting's chairperson. Speakers would be your auditor, your lawyer, board president, or other invited guests that may be speaking during a designated period of time. Uh, and attendees would be everyone else. These would be your owners, shareholders, voters, members, candidates for elections, 
or even just observers. Audience controls uh, allow a chairperson to control who can speak at any given time. Uh, I would say that the audience controls are arguably the most important requirement and probably the biggest benefit of a virtual AGM. Uh, muting participants by default uh, means that there's really no way for someone to interrupt the speaker. When candidates for election are given their, say, three minutes to speak, uh, you can mute your microphone if they exceed their time. Uh, some flexibility should probably be provided, though. Uh, I think many of us have been at meetings where proceedings get held up. Um, as a last resort, audience controls can be used to uh, allow a meeting to continue. Um, audience controls are available only to the chairperson. Uh, attendees uh, cannot see who else is on the call. Uh, JJ, pardon the interruption, but uh, we're getting some comments that they'd like you to speak a little bit louder if that's at all possible. Oh, I'm, I'm, I apologize for that. There you go. So uh, virtual hand raising is a common and uh, necessary function for meetings. Attendees can raise their hand uh, via a, a button press on their screen. Um, only the chair can see who has raised their hand. And uh, yeah, I see a few of you raising your hands. Um, hand raising is uh, useful uh, when asking for motions from the floor, um, for a show of hands after a motion, for registering objections, uh, and it might even be useful if you want to uh, allow um, attendees to speak uh, verbally in, during the uh, Q&A session uh, so that you can unmute that specific person. Polling is another common feature. Um, the best way to kind of demonstrate it is to really just try it out. So uh, we have one set up. Let me just um, fire it up here. Uh, and you do need the app, uh, the Zoom app to participate though. So uh, we'll, we'll give people 15 seconds or so to try out this, uh, this poll. There we go. Not many people answering, but you know that's that's just the uh, the poll system over you. So polls would be useful for for live surveys. Uh, it might also be a, another option for uh, a show of hands from the from the floor. Chat and Q and A is also universally um, uh, a universal function am amongst webcasting software. Uh, we've kind of got chat; uh, it's only set up so that it only it goes to the panelists. Um, it's generally not a good idea to allow public chats during the events, uh, as it can, can get overwhelming, uh, and it can get disruptive to everybody too. If, uh, if for example, here we have uh, over 250 attendees, uh, so you know if everyone started messaging at once, it'd get quite crazy. Um, questions are public are private until the host decides to make it public, uh, and ensuring that no one else sees uh, uh, the questions until uh, the host chooses uh, to let people see it. Uh, this is how we'll run our Q and A after today's presentation. And lastly, during the meeting, uh, you will, if you decide to do voting, uh, you will need to use a uh, separate voting platform. Uh, we're not going to let's not confuse voting with polling, which we demonstrated earlier. Uh, voting on substantive matters uh, requires uh, a voting system to be secure and auditable. Uh, the results of the real-time votes need to be combined combined with the um, votes received before the meeting. For example, your proxies or your advanced ballots. Uh, and secure voting is typically not part of webcasting software. They are two separate softwares built for specific purposes. Uh, this would be where you would want to combine your webcast software with uh, GetQuorum's voting platform. Uh, and in our experience, uh, it actually, they, they integrate quite well. So finally, uh, recommended procedures. Uh, the chair should only allow one person to speak at a time. Make sure everyone else is muted, even speakers to prevent background noise. Handling questions in real time can get overwhelming. So if you can, please encourage questions to be sent in ahead of time. Uh, if you do enable chat, do it sparingly and set it so attendees can only chat with the, with the hosts. Um, and 
in order for attendees to participate, most software will require them to go online. Webcasting software allows you to record your EGM, uh, and we are recording our webinar uh, here so that people can see it later, uh, but it is good practice to, to record it for your records. And, and finally, a meeting will run much, much smoother if the chairperson is also familiar with the software and its controls. And uh, now I will pass this uh, over to Trevor, who will talk about some considerations for virtual AGMs, legal uh, and otherwise. Trevor. Thanks, JJ. So despite all the features JJ just showed you, users of virtual meeting technology will inevitably need to adapt their meeting processes to fit within the technological boundaries of such technology. In other words, we want people to understand that though our aim is to provide users with the same processes and rights one would typically expect at an owner or member meeting, the experience is quite different. And in an in-person meeting, the people are right there. The energy is there, you can read the room, you can see hands raised and people can speak and yell and interrupt. Certain decisions can be made in real time. Using a virtual platform with real time functionality that is moderated by a third party technical expert is an entirely different experience. Let me give you some examples and most of these are things that JJ just touched on. In a virtual meeting, motions from the floor need to be handled differently. We use our show of hands and polling functionality. Hand raising is done with the press of a button. Q&A happens through a private chat window. Owners or members are by default muted and can't speak at a turn, which for some of those board mem members listening in today, that actually might be a good thing. Nominations from the floor will need to be handled differently as well, using a show of hands functionality. And ballots given to proxy holders with general powers will need to be carefully set up in advance to ensure that they are given the appropriate weighting. All that to say, if you try and run a virtual AGM exactly like you run an in-person AGM, then you will find that to be a challenge. But if you adapt and compromise to the capabilities that virtual AGM platforms can offer, you may find that the meeting is a more structured and efficient experience and one that respects the rights and procedural principles that are customary of AGMs and other owner and meeting mem member meetings. Moving on to legal considerations. I wanted to start by saying that fortunately for us, we are not lawyers, but a software company. So the determination of whether or not virtual meetings is something suitable for your organization will be up to you, your board, and your lawyers. That said, we've had way too many conversations about this technology with lawyers in different jurisdictions to count, and we have made some observations that we wanted to share with you today. First, the question as to whether or not your organization can hold a virtual meeting may be answered by looking at your governing statute and your bylaws in the context of the current circumstances surrounding COVID-19. The answer to this question may change from jurisdiction to jurisdiction and organization to organization. Many Ontario condominium lawyers, for example, believe that virtual meetings are permitted under the recently amended Condo Act and that condos that already have passed an electronic and attendance bylaw would likely be permitted to hold a virtual meeting with electronic balloting and real-time voting. Condos that have not passed such a bylaw have other options available to them. Similarly, in Florida, we understand that with a proper electronic voting meeting bylaw in place, there's nothing in the applicable statute prohibiting a condo or HOA from holding a virtual meeting. Electronic voting for its part is expressly permitted. Our nonprofit and member organization clients are typically governed by statutes that permit or are silent on the use of electronic voting and virtual technology. And many have bylaws that already expressly permit the use of this technology. Second, in this COVID-19 world, the same rules do not necessarily apply. For example, Florida's governor recently declared a state of emergency in Florida, thereby allowing Florida community associations to use emergency powers that are set forth in their statutes, which include the relaxation of certain owner meeting related requirements. In Ontario, the Ontario government recently issued a government order expressly allowing those corporations governed by the Corporations Act, which is many of our nonprofit and member organization clients to hold meetings of directors, shareholders and members virtually. Third, different clients will use our technology in different ways. That is, there are a number of procedural variations that our platform can accommodate to ensure that our clients can be confident that they're conducting a meeting that is in compliance with their governing statute and bylaws. For example, 
Ontario condos that have not yet passed an electronic voting and attendance bylaw may use electronic proxies, which are permitted under the Act without a bylaw, in connection with, and I'm using air quotes here, a remote meeting. In this scenario, a meeting would be called to be held at a physical location of the chairperson, likely in their unit or perhaps the in-building boardroom or management office. Meeting attendance would likely be limited to the chair with get quorum or another party acting as scrutineer. The proxies, which would be restricted in nature, would name the chair as the proxy holder. Quorum for the meeting would be established through the proxies and the meeting itself would be broadcast to the owners using get quorum's virtual meeting technology. In this scenario, real-time real -time voting or electronic ballot voting would not be used. We are also aware of other condo lawyers that are advising their Ontario condo clients that, in the context of COVID-19, holding a virtual AGM in the circumstances is entirely consistent with the health and safety orders being issued by the province. But once again, we want to emphasize that it is important that you discuss this with your lawyer. We are happy to work with them to find a solution that works for your organization. I will now pass it back to Ben to discuss life after COVID and get quorum service offering. All right, everybody. Um, so obviously there will be life after COVID-19, but it may be a little different than it was before. While mandated social distancing measures will eventually be eased, owners and members may continue to be wary about attending large gatherings in confined spaces for the foreseeable future. At the same time, we do not believe that the condo industry was and is ready tra to transition directly to virtual meetings. If we had to guess, we believe that there will be more emphasis on allowing for participation without live in-person attendance. For progressive communities with the appropriate demographics, that may mean hybrid meetings, which would be a traditional in-person meeting, but also offering a live virtual stream with real-time participation offered virtually. For the majority of the industry, we foresee a greater emphasis on advanced participation in the meeting, via either electronic proxies or electronic balloting. In either circumstance, reducing the overall footprint of the meeting by reducing unnecessary in-person attendance by offering alternatives will become best practice if it isn't already. So finally, we're ready to talk about our hosted virtual AGM service. I'd like to thank everyone for hanging in there. Uh, and we see a whole bunch of questions queuing up. So just bear with us. We're two slides away. We think it's pretty clear that if you wanted to hold, host your own virtual AGM, you could do so with the technology in the market using the procedures that we've talked about. However, what we've been hearing from our clients is that they do not have the time or the resources to execute this. Rather, they're busy dealing with their running their communities during the COVID-19 crisis. The Get Quorum hosted virtual AGM service has tied everything that we have talked about together into a turnkey solution where Get Quorum provides the software for the webcasting and for the voting. The idea being for our clients that if you want to host a virtual owner meeting, all you need to do is show up with a laptop and an internet connection. Get Quorum will do the rest. So let's have a quick look at what exactly is provided. Starting with the top, enterprise webinar technology. Get Quorum will extend and allow the uses of our webinar technology. What we're using presently is Zoom. Get advanced speaker controls, live meeting moderation, and audience engagement, which is QA moderation, all will be provided by Get Quorum. We offer a secure attendee registration system that is monitored and administered by Get Quorum. Real-time voting via the Get Quorum platform integration with electronic proxy and advanced electronic ballots, and minutes provided to you via our partners minute solutions, or optionally you can have your own minute taker attend, or you can receive a recording of your AGM and have that sent off to be transcribed. And lastly, and most importantly, is the dress rehearsal, which we encourage to happen at the very latest the day before the AGM, where we will run through your meeting agenda and practice and apply uh, the various, tech, various technology capabilities to ensure that we can um, facilitate all of your various procedures. So that is it for our presentation. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, we now have a series of questions that we are going to go through, uh, starting from the top. JJ, do you want to rhyme off the question and let me know who you'd like to answer it? 
Yeah, sure. So I think uh, the first to start off, I, I, we had a number of people here saying that uh, they weren't able to, to try out the poll. Uh, so uh, what we'll try to do again is, is just to run it. And so maybe people can, can uh, see it here. So let me try it again. Hopefully people can see the poll now. Uh, it might be Mm hmm. That's not. Let me do a little bit of tech support and maybe I can figure out why it's, uh, it's not running. But you know, there is a live poll that runs and I believe uh, it does require um, the uh, Zoom app to be installed. I'll start on the questions, JJ. Denise asked, so will Get Quorum be the moderator and using our hosted virtual AGM service? Yes, Get Quorum is the moderator of the meeting. Next question was, how secure are the meetings? Can anyone join? And the answer is no, not any, just anyone can join. Get Forum will send secure invites to the membership and owners based on the information that our, our clients provide to us. Another question, how do you deal with owners that do not have a computer or internet? It's a fair question, Shelley. Uh, we believe that virtual AGMs are for clients that have a ownership and membership of a certain demographic. Uh, and unfortunately, for owners that do not have a computer or the internet, their ability to participate in real time is limited. However, they would have an opportunity to submit an advanced ballot or an electronic proxy prior to the meeting. And they can dial in using the phone to listen live. We just want to make sure we're clear. To participate, meaning to vote and ask questions in real time during the meeting, you must be logged into the software. If you do not have a computer or the internet, you may dial in using just your phone, but because we cannot securely identify you, you will not be permitted to participate in the uh, elections and for official voting. Okay, so uh, it looks like, sorry, just to jump in there, but it looks like the, uh, the, the, the poll ran. Uh, I'm just sharing the results now. Uh, so hopefully you guys were able to see that, uh, that poll there. Um, okay, thanks, Ben. You can please continue. How legitimate is this program considering the Condo Act? Uh, some lawyers say it may be illegal. Uh, and so our, you know, Trevor, maybe I'll kick it back over to you if you want to make sure you're off mute and you want to quickly answer that one. Sure. Um, you know, like, like I said, uh, when I was speaking earlier, we don't make that assessment ourselves, but I can tell you that I've had many, 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 many conversations with different condominium lawyers who have reviewed this technology under the act and, and have found themselves getting comfortable that this is permitted under the act, you know, provided you have a bylaw or you have a remote meeting, like I suggested, um, you know, there's still some lawyers out there that don't believe that electronic proxies are, are legal under the act. So I don't think everyone is going to get comfortable necessarily, but I do think that the vast majority of larger law firms in Toronto and other provinces or sorry in Ontario that we've uh, talked to are, are comfortable with this. Thank you. Uh, another question is, once this is over, will you be able to combine an in-person meeting with a virtual meeting so people who cannot attend in person can do so online? The answer is yes. That is called a hybrid meeting where an in-person meeting occurs, uh, offering a live stream uh, and participation in real time to those that wish to do so virtually. Juan Carlos, hello, asked, who controls the raised hands? And is there a system allows to check who clicked on the option first? Uh, one Carlos, the answer is simply get quorum controls the raised hands functionality in addition to the chairperson or hosts of the meeting. So both get quorum and a certain person uh, on the client side are able to control the raised hands. Uh, and yes, you can see who has raised their hand first, which is very helpful when doing motions and seconds and stuff like that. Can everyone see the poll results? Yes, absolutely. Um, for minutes, will you be able to identify the person posting the question? Absolutely. Margaret asks, do all participants need the Zoom software installed to participate? 
The answer is yes, to participate and vote in real time, you do. Otherwise, uh, you're able to dial in and hear audio only. I believe we've answered that. Not sure how many condos will have the ability to set this up. Will you be offering to do this for them? Yes, absolutely. We will, we will be offering a service to do this. Get Quorum's hosted AGM service is designed so that all the panelists, meaning the board, lawyer, auditor, whoever is uh, speaking at the meeting, simply need to show up with a laptop. Everything else is taken care of. Yes, there is a practice mode for presenters, Maria. Mm -hmm. If someone provides a proxy prior to the meeting, can they attend? And what if they vote again at the meeting? What is put in place to prevent this from happening? Very good question, Denise. If you're using Get Quorum's hosted AGM service, we know exactly who has submitted proxies, and we know exactly which owners are now ballot holders, or sorry, proxy holders, and we're able to ensure that those that have submitted a proxy, unless they are revoking said proxy, are not able to vote in real time. Similar question from Audrey is, how do you ensure only those that are entitled to vote are the ones that are voting? Uh, and that is an easy solution for us, although it will take uh, some coordination with our client to ensure that eligible voters only are listed and, ex and are able to access, access and vote during the meeting. Uh, John asked, what are best practices around informing the owners that the AGM will be recording? Uh, and that's certainly something that a chairperson can do at the very beginning of the meeting. Part of what we do when we go through rehearsals is set up housekeeping at the beginning of the AGM to explain that it will be recorded uh, and shared afterwards, as well as outlining how participation will work. Uh, we're creeping up on over 35 minutes, and unfortunately, our question queue has ballooned to just over 85 questions. So it's gonna be difficult for us to answer all of these live. So JJ and Trevor, I'm thinking that it may be better for us to respond individually to these questions after the fact. What do you guys think? Yeah, we can respond after the fact. We can even uh, put together a, uh, a, a blog post with um, a lot of these common questions. Uh, I think a lot of them kind of fit into a, a bunch of categories and uh, then we can just share that uh, in our newsletter or in our blog post. Very good. Well, everybody, we'd like to thank you once again uh, for attending the meeting. Uh, we'll certainly be sharing it on our blog and on our newsletter. Um, and we'll do our very, very best to, uh, to answer the questions either directly in response back to you, or perhaps it'll be a, a longer blog post from us to, to outline some of the common concerns that are shared by our, uh, by our uh, uh, the, the attendees of the webinar. So once again, thanks a lot and stay safe, everybody.